Hello and welcome to my Chimera State YouTube channel. It's finally here, the new Native Instruments Control MK3 keyboard in the S61 version, which stands for 61 keys. And I'll say it right here, for me personally, it's my best purchase of the year. Because those who follow my videos closely know that I used the 49 key version of the first complete control keyboard generation intensively for almost 10 years. And so you will learn firsthand from a real user why the upgrade is worth it, what the differences are and why I'm so thrilled. If you like the video I would be very happy about like and channel subscription. But let's start from the beginning. The Native Instruments Control MK3 keyboard is available in three versions, all equipped with Fatar keypad and polyphonic aftertouch. The S49 with 49 semi-weighted keys, the S61 with 61 semi-weighted keys and the S88 with 88 fully weighted hammer action keys. But this is also noticeable in the price and weight, because at 13.5 kilograms, the S88 is more than twice as heavy as the other two models and with a RRP of 1299 euros, it also costs significantly more than the S49 and S61. The Native Instruments Control MK3 keyboard comes solidly packaged and what immediately stands out in comparison with its predecessor is that the packaging appears more environmentally friendly but also reveals nothing about the content, the features and the functions as was still the case with the first generation. Included in the package is a keyboard and a USB cable. Those who expect an instruction manual or need a power supply will be disappointed, as it is necessary if you do not have a USB-C port that can power the keyboard. The processing, design and haptics of the new Control MK3 keyboard, however, convince all along the line. The unibody housing made of plastic looks absolutely stunning and the knobs, rotary controls, buttons and modulation wheels are perfectly processed and feel absolutely high quality through and through. A noticeable difference to my S49 of the first generation. With 6kg and dimensions of 86 x 967 323 mm the keyboard is heavier and somewhat larger than my S49 of the first generation, which of course also makes a difference on my desk and the new keyboard now takes up almost all the space. Nevertheless, I consciously chose the 61 key version as the strength of control keyboards is a seamless integration with NKS capable instruments. This means that most instruments have function keys assigned to the lower or higher octaves on the keyboard, which are marked differently in color by means of light guide as native instruments calls the LEDs above the keys. On the 49 key version you can see these at a glance and have to switch between the octaves. The best user experience is of course with the S88 version, as you can see the entire key assignment at a glance. But in my studio the S88 would not have found any space and due to the weight it would not have been so easy to take the keyboard to gigs and transport it. I'm therefore very happy with my decision and with the additional octave it is also an upgrade for me compared to my S49 of the first generation. The controls may seem sparse compared to other MIDI keyboards, but the full potential unfolds through the centrally located display and all knobs, keys and rotary controls are chosen so that intuitive and simple operation is possible, even without an instruction manual, which, as already mentioned, is not included in the packaging, but can be downloaded from the Native Instruments website. I will go into more detail about the display later. Because yes, as the keyboard now lies there, it looks nice, but even if you connect it to power, you can't do anything with Native Instruments Control MK3 as long as it is not connected to a computer via the USB-C port. Because to breathe life into the keyboard and use its full potential, Native Instruments Complete Control or Contact 7 software is necessary since the MK3 version. I welcome the latter very much as I use Contact 7 permanently and Contact 7 generally loads the instruments faster than Complete Control. Once you have connected the keyboard to the computer, you will be prompted to enter the serial number in Native Access, the installation management software from Native Instruments, the first time you start it. Before you can finally start, a controller software update must be uploaded to the keyboard. The URL where the update can be downloaded is displayed directly on the keyboard's display. And then you can finally start. To make full use of all the possibilities of the new keyboard generation, it is recommended to start the complete control software and initialize all NKS capable instruments. This can take some time, but it's worth it, because after that all instruments that support NKS are available via complete control and that means that sound parameters are automatically assigned to the controls of the keyboard. 
And that brings us to the huge advantage and my personal reason for buying a Native Instruments Control MK3 keyboard. Because with other MIDI controllers, you have to laboriously assign each individual sound parameter from third-party software plugins, and if you change the DAW or the operating system, the setup starts all over again. Complete Control is a real game changer here, saves a lot of time and for me it feels a bit magical that third-party software instruments can also be controlled via the MK3 control keyboard without having to do anything for it. After Complete Control has initialized all instruments, the high resolution color display with glass surface and a resolution of 1280 x 480 pixels shows all available instruments categorized by instruments, loops, one-shots and effects. Using the rotary controls located under the display, you can now browse through all instruments, select one and then choose a preset. What I find great when browsing through the presets is the preview function, which is assigned to each instrument and makes the search for suitable sounds so much faster. Once you have found the right preset, you can simply load it by clicking on the 4D encoder as a large control knob is called, which can not only be pressed, rotated and moved in all directions like a joystick or via the button on the far right above the display, which is also marked with the word load on the display. When the preset and the associated instrument are loaded, they appear on the display and as already described, all sound parameters are automatically assigned to the rotary controls located under the display. You can navigate through farther menus using the arrow keys to the left of the screen. The ability to directly view the assigned sound parameters on the display via the Control MK3 keyboards changes music production drastically compared to my S49 of the first generation without a screen. Because through the display it almost feels like you have a hardware synthesizer in front of you. The integration encourages you to try out controls and automations and thus individualize presets. In daily use, it really makes a huge difference whether you adjust sound parameters with a mouse on the computer monitor or haptically using the hardware controller of the fully integrated MK3 keyboard. Again, for me a big upgrade compared to my old MIDI controller. I myself use Native Instruments Complete 14 Collector's Edition, about which I have already made a video on this YouTube channel. Included in this are many expansions that are actually aimed at machine users. I have tested Machine Plus for you on this channel as well, but for me it turned out that Machine is not for me. Therefore I don't miss any additional pads on the MK3 keyboard like you find on Machine Hardware, but of course I'm happy that the one-shots and loops contained in the expansions can also be controlled via Control MK3. This brings us to another useful feature, which I'm very pleased about. With the Native Instruments Control MK3 keyboard, you can currently also control the DAWs Logic, Ableton and Cubase, but others like Bitwig, Digital Performer, FL Studio, Pro Tools and Studio One are to follow. A so-called shortcut sheet can be downloaded from the Native Instruments website and shows the functions that can be controlled with the keyboard. Compared to my first generation keyboard, much more can be controlled thanks to the display such as the volume of a channel, the panorama or the ability to solo or mute a track. 
I think it's great that I can now control the most common functions in Cubase via the keyboard. Of course, some work steps are faster with a mouse on the computer screen, others are more intuitive, precise and faster to set via the keyboard in the function of a hardware controller. This brings me to the so-called light guide, as Native Instruments calls the LEDs above the keyboard. The color and intensity of the lights can be adjusted via the settings menu and the light guide not only looks amazing but is also quite useful. As already mentioned, many NKS instruments have additional triggers and functions assigned to the keyboard and different colors of the LEDs indicate which keys are assigned differently. Furthermore, the light guide plays its strengths in play assist mode. Unfortunately, this mode is only available with the complete control software, not via Contact 7. In the Play Assist menu you have the choice between Scale and Art mode or to use both modes in combination. Scale includes an extensive selection of pre-programmed chords that can be triggered with just one keyboard key. This allows you to create chord progressions very quickly and easily. ARPS, as the name suggests, is a quite powerful and sophisticated arpeggiator. Once you have selected both modes in combination or individually, the light guide provides information about which keys on the keyboard belong to a chord or which key sequence is included when triggering the arpeggiator. However, there's still so much untapped potential in the light guide. For example, it would be great if native instruments would enable piano lessons through it, the light guide would be a perfect playing aid and I'm really very curious how native instruments will further exploit the potential of the MK3 keyboards in the coming months and years. This brings me to the end of the video. As you can see, I have made a lot of effort to answer the most important questions that were swirling around in my head before buying my MK3 keyboard. And of course, I will be happy if you leave a comment with further questions and support me by subscribing to this channel. See you next time. Auf Wiedersehen.